School boards have traditionally been the domain of nonpartisan civic service, with volunteer community members weighing in on curricula and budgets. But in the last few years, school boards around the country have also increasingly become reflections of the nation's polarized political divisions. Tonight, Judy Woodruff reports on one district in northwest Pennsylvania, where policies around library books, gender and sports, and how race and history are taught have divided some community members. It's her latest installment of America at a Crossroads. At Sager Town High School, students stream into the building in the waning days of the school year. It's one of three high schools in a sprawling, mostly rural district called Pencrest, which covers 400 square miles south of Erie, Pennsylvania. And it's a community where resident Jeff Brooks says ties to the area run deep. My grandfather was supervisor for 50 years. My mom um, started the rec board here, was involved in the church. Brooks lives on the family farm where he grew up. A social worker in Erie, he's lived in this area his entire life, save four years in the Navy. It's the same people I grew up with when I'm at any place. I know people, I know their parents, I know their kids. Brooks graduated from the Pencrest district himself and had three children go through the district. He's youngest, still in high school. And you decided at some point to run for the school board? Yes. Why? Pencrest used to be a top 50 district in the state. And when I did a little research, we were kind of living off our reputation. Brooks was elected to the board as a Republican in 2017 and re-elected to a four-year term in 2019. The way school boards should be done is a very boring, thankless job that you don't get paid for. You show up at a couple meetings. You hear people talk about curriculum, and that's not what it's been. Like in many school districts across the country, Pencrest has found itself caught up in debates over cultural values and what belongs inside the school walls. Brooks says the recent turmoil began in the spring of 2021, when a school board member shared a Facebook post of a photo of LGBTQ-themed books on display at a district high school library. The board member, David Valeski, added, quote, Besides the point of being totally evil, this is not what we need to be teaching kids. They aren't at school to be brainwashed into thinking homosexuality is okay. Valeski did not respond to interview requests from the NewsHour. It's a school board member calling students in the district evil. And that, to me, is appalling. Teresa Berrickman is a parent in the Pencrest district. Her son graduated last year, and her daughter Claire will be a junior at Sagertown this fall. Some of the political rhetoric that we've heard on the national level has empowered people and let them feel like it's okay to say these not so nice things about people. The dust up around the book display didn't immediately lead to any policy changes, but later that summer, a resolution was introduced against teaching critical race theory, or CRT, in this overwhelmingly white district. I think if you ask 20 people to write down what they thought it was, you'd get 20 different definitions. It's not being taught. No one's given an example of CRT being taught. It's just a boogeyman that's out there to scare everybody. It should reassure people so that they're not pulling their kids out of their school because they think we're doing something that we're not. While the original resolution didn't pass, the board did affirm that the district has multiple policies which protect students from indoctrination. Pancreas is a very conservative district, and they care about the kids, and they want the kids educated, nothing else. Luigi DeFrancesco is president of the Pancreas School Board. He immigrated to the United States from Italy as a child and moved to this rural area of Pennsylvania in 1977. A retired civil engineer, he served on the school board off and on for more than a decade. How has the board changed in the last few years, would you say? The only thing that changed is that the community finally got involved into what's going on with the board. The majority, you know, wants to make sure that they protect the community standards and the children get educated. 
what they're supposed to educate for. Last December, the board introduced two new controversial policy changes. One designed to ensure students join athletic teams only that are consistent with their gender at birth, even though no transgender athletes have identified themselves. And one targeting library materials that include, quote, visual or visually implied depictions of sexual acts, explicit written depictions of sexual acts, or visual depictions of nudity, exempting anatomy for science or classical works of art. My original reaction was that this is wanting to limit the world that our kids see and to villainize our LGBTQ community. We shouldn't be creating division. We should be focused on creating the best opportunities for our kids in schools. Teresa Barrickman learned about the proposed change from her daughter. There already was a policy in place. If a parent disagrees with one of the books, mm -hmm. they can fill out something, the school district will look into whether the book's appropriate or not. When I talked to the superintendent, he had never had a parent fill out this form and send it in. The following copies of our petition include over 180 signatures from people across the district. Claire Barrickman and a friend drafted a petition opposing the policy change that they circulated among students and community members and presented it to the board in January before the vote. These books cover many crucial topics for students and are representative of many groups throughout the district covering topics of race, sex, gender identity, and diverse backgrounds, which allow students to feel safe and see. But just days later, the board approved both the new book and trans athlete policies, despite reservations raised by the district's lawyer that the changes could open the district up to lawsuits. It is essential this policy needs to be pushed through. It's legal, and my conscience is clear on it. If we go to court over it, so be it because at the end of the day, we're standing up for what's right and we're standing up for what God has said is right and truth. So those policy changes were passed. Uh, the policy changes were passed. What effect do you think they've had? The biggest effect that it's had is it, it's taken time away from our administration to be able to focus on classrooms. The district administration undertook a review of about 150 books, ultimately removing about 10 of them. There is some agreement that some things are off limits. My argument is, you know, this is more about where to draw the line and, and why not err on the side of, of caution. Can you get cups? Brent Zook is a parent of three kids in the Pencrest District and one who just graduated. After learning about the proposed book policy from two of his daughters, he spoke at a Pencrest board meeting in support of the policy. That was the first time I had attended any school board meetings. So you felt pretty strongly about it? Um, I, I did. I mean, I think these are things that are very important to people. At the same time, I wanted to be part of a healthy d discussion, if, if possible, and try to, to have some input to the, to the conversation that could be received by, the, by those who didn't agree. Zook contends the fact that parents could already ask librarians for books to be off limits for their children was inadequate and that the policy as written does not target any particular group. Students could go to the public library mm -hmm. and check out these mm -hmm. books and certainly there's so much available right now online and social media. How much of a difference does it make because some books have been taken off the shelf? Yeah, I don't view it as a as a war to be won. Um, I, I view it more as acknowledging that if, if there's a shared space, which a public school library is, and there are some that, that feel this isn't appropriate, here's the standard we're gonna have. Even with the policy in place, parents still have the, the opportunity to present whatever they want to their children. You know, this is a public school, and if they want to shelter their kids, then homeschool them or send them to a private school. You know, it's not about me. It's not about my daughter. I can take my daughter to the library. I can buy her the books. But because it is such a rural and, you know, lower cost of living community, there are families that can't. And those are the kids that I worry about. 
Board President Luigi Di Francesco denies that the policy discriminates against any group, including the LGBTQ community, and insists that change was necessary to conform with Pennsylvania's state laws against providing explicit material to minors. A number of these books that you're citing, there's real disagreement that that's pornography. That they'll say, yes, there's some explicit language in there, but it's it's brief, it's within the context of a story. These young people are learning about different experiences. It doesn't mean that, that, that they're going to become that or do whatever they read. Well, the law doesn't say that. The law says do not provide pornographic material, period, you know. You know, if, if they get information from someplace else or whatever, you know, I don't want to be guilty. What about their argument that they're just trying to protect children from bad things, bad material, bad influences? I understand that, and I think that, you know, a school should be a safe place for every kid, but there's no way to protect everyone from every idea that's out there. To me, to be protected would be understand the world around you and be prepared to deal with it. Teresa's daughter, Claire, says that the divisiveness of the book controversy among school board members has not trickled down to students. Overall, I feel like people, for the most part at our school, try to be kind to others. And there are people that have come up to us and said that they didn't sign the petition only because they just didn't want to get involved with all the drama and the politicalness that it had become. That political drama now has a chance to be resolved at the ballot box. In May, residents voted in primaries to fill seven seats on the nine-person Pencrest School Board. Luigi DeFrancesco ran for a two-year term, but came in third and isn't expected to be on the ballot this November. You know, it really don't matter to me if I win or lose, as long as we have a board that will protect the kids and educate them. Jeff Brooks decided not to run again. It was becoming very personal attacks on me that I was a, a groomer for children, that um, I supported kiddie porn, and I didn't feel like I could respond in an election in a way that would be what a school board member should respond. The other thing I thought that I was a poster child as some sort of liberal socialist, and by me not running, then the issues could be on the facts and not the fiction. With school out for the summer and the primary pass, things have quieted down in the district, but divisions in this close community have been opened up as everyone waits to see the makeup and actions of the new school board this fall. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Judy Woodruff in Sagertown, Pennsylvania.